All right, so um, not a lot on the menu today, um, but there are a couple things uh, we should talk about. Um, first two items, the P2P optimized transaction propagation and the RAM limitation fixes. Um, as we've said, these are still paused, but will soon be open as ENF is getting ready for the next uh, release coming up. Um, the next one, P2P peer discovery. Uh, now, I did want to ask uh, Guillaume and Lucas about the status of the last milestone. Um, it's like the milestone, the PR was posted on March 22nd and it's still kind of pending. Um, so, is there a timeline on this? Is this something that there's a blocker that we can get resolution on, or did they miss the mark and there's a lot of uh issues that they need to recover like kind of what's the status on that so we can close this out so <clears throat> from my uh perspective it's a little bit of of all of that <laughs> where um sure on on one end um <clears throat> there were uh so so there's there's a few prs um and i'm not first, first of all i kind of i don't i don't really know where to start <laughs> the first first thing i guess is uh, it would be very helpful if we had, um, or if I had, because I, I didn't couldn't find it, and I don't know if it's available anywhere or why. Uh, but I'm I'm not uh, aware of exactly what the terms of these milestones are. Is it just to fulfill the requirements TR one two three four, uh, or is it is is there more to it? Because I mean, in the case of what have been uh, what we've been doing with Sentinelity and IBC, for example, there was a pretty clear. Not clear enough to my liking, but there was still a pretty clear definition of what needed to be done that looked like a deliverable and not just a requirement. So it's kind of it's it's difficult to say are we meeting the requirement or not if it's <clears throat> if there's no deliverable. I mean, like these are PRs that are supposed to be merged in the code base, but they don't lead to any functional product or functional, uh, you know, like uh, I guess I guess like um, features just yet, uh, but. I'm I'm kind of at a loss in terms of what should be done next because if if it was if I was the you know like a maintainer of that of that code base I would not accept these PRs because they don't they're basically like you know like a uh, bunch of loose <laughs> and loose strings that are not leading to any completion of any feature it's, it doesn't doesn't get us anywhere it's just additional code that gets added without having any uh, clear purpose if you you um, get what I mean. Uh, so I'm not I'm not quite sure how the milestones were defined, and uh, if 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 this is the appropriate way to kind of go about it. There's also other other things uh, that I'd like to point out, but maybe start and start with this. If anyone has um, any additional information on that front? Maybe just if you uh, if you have a bit more info here. Yeah, sure. So first of all. Um... This then sounds like an issue we need to coordinate back with Fumin. Um, the milestones are defined. That was in the um, uh, the, the RFP response, and Fumin should have that. Now, how the PR, the specific PR, matches with a specific milestone? Again, I don't have that in front of me, but that would be where the information is. Right. And if there is some sort of lack of clarity um, between the two. Um, so that's a different issue than was escalated to me, um, which is fine, right? Let's let's kind of get to the bottom of this. Um, so if that's the case, what we can do is I will see, like, let's pick a time where uh, we can also have Thuman involved and then you and uh, Lucas or Lucas, your a representative, um, get on a call and walk through that and make sure that we all understand what the target is that they're attempting to hit right now. Right. Okay. So that's, that's, that's number one, um, which, which definitely will help. Um, number two on that list, uh, it's, it's a bit, I mean, I mean, there's, there's probably more discussion to be had, uh, with the team regarding that. But uh, there were also, um, you know, like uh, clear misses, in my opinion, uh, in terms of what was uh, done versus what was expected. Like they, uh, for example, one of these PRs added a, uh, 
a configuration element that should not have been a configuration element and should have been instead a kind of, I guess, like a resource that should be uh, part of the uh, of the uh, the code base. And uh, it's kind of it's kind of like feels feels to me like that the requirement was not well understood there. Uh, so that one, I mean, has been addressed. We fixed it, but it kind of it kind of raised additional questions as to the understanding of what is required uh, versus what is being delivered. Because if if <laughs> it's kind of it's kind of you know like you're asking someone to paint the, the the fence blue and they they end up cutting the fence in two instead. Like it's it kind of doesn't really they'll like bring you to the 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 end the uh, goal. Yeah. <laughs> so there, there's one there's one problem if if if. And there's a misunderstanding that leads to one, you know, that happens once. It's a whole different level right. if you start recognizing that there's just going to be ongoing communication challenges and um, not just, you know, in, in, in various terms. So, right. Yeah. And, and to be fair, they, they've addressed it. I brought it up. They, 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 they understood it. And after, after uh, just a little bit of back and forth, they fixed that. So that was, that was salt. But uh, I'm, I'm, yeah, like I, I just want to make sure that I understand exactly what they've been tasked with, and uh, how they're proposing to uh, address that. So that way, yeah. I can, I can, I can review it. But I'm dealing with something very similar, trying to hire a, a reasonably large number of developers, and um, and um, that is something that that we're facing. And so all I, I'll, all I would say, you know, would suggest would be try to assess, try to make a good assessment of whether these are going to be ongoing problems or whether these are sort of one-off problems right. that once once fixed won't be because to me that's the that's that's going to be the that's going to be the limiting factor that's going right. to of of how well this will work so a year and well that's just my opinion and there was another kind of like similar issue i guess uh which which also raised additional question and didn't really know how to go about this but uh, at some points, there was someone else, uh, CRT Vavros, who's part of the Zero Pass team, I believe, uh, was also been reviewing uh, PRs. I think they're doing it as a just just voluntary uh, work. I asked uh, their their uh, team lead, and said they were encouraging their developers basically to uh, look at outstanding PRs, provide comments there, uh, and uh, the guy essentially suggested that they benchmark uh, various. You know, like um, ways of doing things, essentially like dealing with uh, uh, mutex objects to kind of control um, thread flow and that kind of stuff. But not to go into details. And uh, so, so uh, he suggested that they benchmark performance of various uh, attempts at doing so. And and they came up with some sort of a test where they said, like, oh, like we're we're spawning a thousand threads and we're running like thirty thousand iteration. Here's a performance, but it's not. This is not the proper test like there's nobody's running 10,000 threads on on a, on these machines like you might might want to test you know with, with five or ten or something but yeah you know, like they're testing a, they're testing a situation that never actually exists in real life exactly but by like two orders of magnitude so what's the value of it and that yeah. that raises it because I mean I mean uh if you, if you work with multi-threading you also know that this is going to cause additional issue like there's there's basically like uh, you know, context switching costs of, of, of basically like moving from one thread to the other and whatnot. And so they're, they're not measuring at all with what it's right. Be right. Yeah. Those problems grow non, non linearly. And, right. and so, and, and it suggests, if I'm, if I'm hearing you right, to me, it suggests a, a lack of fundamental understanding of what it not, that has nothing to do with language or anything else. And it just has to do with, um, is there a clear understanding of what our actual goals here are? And, you know, right. or, or is there, or are people just trying to like create a volume of, of work that, you know, that may not, you know, actually contribute much value, you know, to me. Exactly. And this is, this is exactly it. Yeah. Because I mean, at the end of the day, at the end of the day, you know, like uh, uh, looking at the actual requirements, actual milestones um, is, is uh, very important in determining whether or not they're making progress towards these goals. And uh, my concern so far is that seeing the way that they've looked, they've, they've been handling it, it requires, it would require a lot of micromanagement to basically get them to produce code that has a chance to be eventually merged into this. Because if, if never, I mean, like the way, the way it's going so far, I'm, I'm a bit, a bit, <laughs> you know, like, uh, 
worry. I can just give my perspective, guys. I mean, working with uh, teams in South America and Asia, uh, I mean, a, a it, it is a very a touch heavy process. Uh, I mean, I spend most of my days on calls daily with each team and then each project requires detailed technical specifications and kickoff where you actually walk through in detail what needs to be done and then you have to require them to pair it back next day in writing you know what it is that you understood that needs to be done with with the actual you know technical milestones and goals and and this process repeats daily right like unless you cannot have a team in asia that speaks different language and and have different cultural understandings or whatever differences and and just let them be for a couple of weeks and and expect to get what you want right like this has to be it's a very high touch process and i don't know if we do that today uh if we don't then then they're not going to be successful right well i know uh, that, that the management with the management resource that would that would presuppose a certain amount of of project management resources that we don't have even close to, right? We so we're very fortunate. It's more than that oh. because they've been raising questions and Fuman has been bringing those questions back. But then sometimes, not every time, but sometimes like days, maybe even weeks would go by on this, just in this project with no response. So like we need a better escalation path, right? To say, hey, there's an open issue and we have to have resources with the engineering capability to be able to respond. Now, I get the right. fact that the escalation part, that's definitively on Fuman, and I'll work with him to say, look, if there's an open item, you need to pound the, the drum every single day. But you got to understand that he can't answer the technical questions, right? And so we need those people to be involved right. to, to address that. No, I assume it's a good. I think it's a good experiment, right? I mean, if if yeah. this process through this particular project does not work, then we know that we do not have capability to effectively engage teams in in other regions, and that's that. I mean, that's that's going to give us an answer whether. But the, but I think I think this can participate. Sorry, I, I go ahead. No, 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 I was just saying. I think I think uh, what you said before to me is is very insightful, and I I agree. It, it probably is is the right way to go. Um, uh, kind of, kind of, you know, like whenever we we ask something, uh, make sure that they reformulate it in their own words, so that we can know that they understood what the the requirement was. Uh, I think I think it will it will definitely help uh, if we if we start adopting that approach, uh, especially dealing with 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 teams that don't necessarily um, speak much English and and whatnot. <clears throat> and uh, at the same time, there's there's also um, I I think I think when we my expectation when when I started and when I agreed to review this and to basically be there uh, <clears throat> and doing that work, I was expecting that you know like uh, I would receive something that was more or less feature complete and I could test that and could verify that it was meeting objective criteria and whatnot. And here I'm basically like it, it really feels like a you know like a. Uh, someone who's been submitting like a homework for their computer science class, you know, like, yeah, sure. Like they've been, they've been naming things, right. They've been writing yeah. code and everything, but it doesn't really compile. It doesn't really work. It doesn't really show you. I think your expectation was correct though. Like I, I, I got this be... feedback from Aaron. So, so this is, right. this is like, like our expectation was that there would be kind of like a final PR that's already right feature complete. And then this is just like a final review. Not yeah, we are like we should we should not be reviewing like uh, you know daily commits for like small little changes. That's that's I not why we're here. Yeah, exactly. So I just totally agree that. With that is why I was saying as well. I think you had your your understanding of what was being asked is is certainly how I understood it, and and what's what you're actually being, you know, uh, led to perform is is ten or more times. The work that you signed on for, all right. By yeah, as an independent person, uh, you know, third party. Yeah, that's 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 personally that's my expectation. I was was expecting to have you know like something that was kind of you know more or less ready, maybe a few little bugs here and there to iron out, little optimizations here and there. But really, it's basically like, oh, here I wrote twenty lines of code. Uh, 
let me know if that that's okay. And I'm like, well, you know, like doesn't really show much. Like it's gonna, you know, like you're you're, you're showing me something that doesn't really work, that doesn't really get us anywhere to uh, near final release or anything like that. And it's kind of it's kind of yeah, like you, you need to get to get much further along before you you ask uh, reviewers to look into that stuff. If I take for example same process that we're doing with uh, Arag and Matt regarding instance finality. I mean, we're like, we're, we're, we've got, we've got code that runs, that works, that's ready to be reviewed. And yeah, sure. There's a little, like few uh, discussion items here and there, uh, to be, uh, to be ironed out, but it is, it is kind of quote, quote, feature complete. And as to, uh, I, I'm not going to bug them until I have something meaningful to show them, you know? So it's kind of, it's kind of like, maybe, maybe I, I misunderstood what was expected in terms of the review process, or maybe, uh, they did not the door. Okay. <laughs> okay. You did not No, And that's what I'm trying to say. Like, we, I don't need, I don't think we need to belabor this, that you should have had a delivered solution that met the expectations and requirements defined in the milestone details. So I've asked Fu man, like he's obviously in a different time zone. So he'll get this in a number of hours. But the first thing we need to do is he needs to meet well, and I'll be on the call as well with you and Aaron at minimum to discuss the scope of the requirements right. that you should be validating just to make sure that it's clarity there. Uh, the other thing, and this is, I talked to Fuman a couple weeks ago about this, but I forgot off the top of my head, I, I've got it written down somewhere. But they were supposed to submit some sort of design or architectural document um, to some level to start the conversation. Because one thing we all knew going into this was that was going to be a big component. Uh, does anybody recall seeing that or reviewing any sort of document that said, okay, here is going to be the structure of our approach? Well, I haven't personally, I haven't seen anything. Okay, because I think I so I'll follow up with that, but I think that is also part of like we can't have experimental code. I totally agree with that. In fact, your comment that it's like you're grading homework is kind of interesting. Uh, but if we had a good architectural document, that could be something worth taking the time to review, and then their code should fill out the picture, and there would be less concerned about uh, some of the low level items. So I will follow up on that as well to see what is going on there. Uh, again, I think this was a good discussion because my understanding of where the issues were was different than what you're uh, sending back. So we'll have an offline discussion, kind of get these things lined up, uh, and, you know, and we'll just try to get this back on track in a way that is not pulling so much time from uh, any of our resources here. Right. And I just want to add also, like this is uh, this may not be um, entirely their fault. There, there, there might have been additional confusion in the in the process that led to the state of things. Maybe they understood something different. So it would be probably a good idea to kind of clear the air, make sure that we're all on the same page. And that would start by yeah, just making sure that we all uh, what we're reviewing that we understand the milestones that are being uh, requested also for review, and that we can properly assess like a. So far, I've been only going by the TR requirements. And I mean, the TR requirements are important to determine uh, what needs to be built, but it's not enough. Like, I mean, can't really say like, oh, like, uh, yeah, I built something that meets requirement one, but if it doesn't also meet two or three and four and five and six, it's not a feature complete application. Yep. Perfect. Yeah. Douglas, you have some nab? Uh, yeah. So first of all, I think this is a great conversation and I, and I appreciate you, you bringing it to us. I'm hearing two issues here, and in the plan to address it, I'm hearing mainly uh, an approach on the first issue. So the first the first issue I hear is the ad is is the ad hoc issue of uh, of and I'll, I'll explain you start. So so there's we are trying to ad hoc you know find a solution for this one situation, but I'm always going to encourage us to to develop methodologies instead so that we don't keep ha having the same ad hoc issues. So the ad hoc issue is that this was not, there are various reasons why this, this issue is not, um, 
uh, you know, going well. And that's fine because it's the first time we've really got with an outside group. Um, but I'm, I would like to encourage us and this may start with you, Jeff, please, as we address these, let's always be thinking in terms of developing a methodologies, methodologies to make sure that this doesn't happen. This doesn't continuously happen. Um, a couple ad hoc things don't hurt us, but, but not, but failing to provide our own methodologies that, that, reduce or eliminate these things will hurt us a lot as as a development group so i, I really like to always i like to propose that we always think in that mind mindset and then one of the things at, and in doing so it you know i think it's been a good it is a good experiment to say hey let's open this up to outside groups but one of the things i'm realizing is this group everyone here whatever by whatever chain it's self it's a self-selected group of of incredibly entrepreneurial people um you know high function thinkers um people who who are very good at working with minimal resources i mean you, you know even even eos has 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 minimal resources by by comparison and, and all the others do of course so so we have self, we have self selected and self trained to be extremely capable under such working conditions, and as I work with other groups um, outside of this, I see that is not at all normal. And we should set our so we should set our expectations that as we go outside of our of our known workforce, I don't think it's I don't think it's realistic to expect you know any level of of uh entrepreneurship or the ability to discern the real valuable issues and things like that um that that i think are just inherent in that i would think anyone anyone in this group be able to boil those things down these are, we're hearing about problems that i don't think any of us would have because none of us would like uh, assign those kinds of testing things to something like like that's that shit sounds like make work shit to, to me and none of us here are make work people because because you know we're not trying to get an A, we're trying to make shit happen. So um, I just encourage. In defense of food, Dan. I don't think I'm not, I'm not, it's not about Canada and USA at all. Anyway, by the way, I want to be really clear. It's not about any one thing. It's about our own process. We can only control our own processes. But yeah, please. Right, I, but I don't think this characterization is quite as accurate because we made it clear to them up front that they're walking into a complicated environment. And we've been telling them, don't, we, we don't want you to sprint out ahead and find out you've been going in the wrong direction. And so to me, it sounds like they're overcompensating in the other direction and saying, hey, here's snippets of code. And so we need to strike the happy balance. Like they're like trying to push forward faster than, um, I wouldn't say fast I, No, I, 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 where I, I think you're right. And, and you're going to check in at each, like, absolutely. Smaller so, steps. so in that whole, in the whole development of the methodology, um, a, approach to this, we should, we should first and foremost, look at our own communications, what we're asking people to do. And if it's, so I'm, I, I don't care where the, personally, it's not important to me where the, there, the, um, blame, I don't even think of the concept of blame, but you know, where, where the fixes land on this only that we look at these fixes and say you know not hey let's never do this one thing again but let's let's look at are we communicating the right things are we you know like at, on a larger scale anyway I, i've said i've said my my piece take it for what you will and thank you for listening all right any more comments on uh p2p peer discovery All right, uh, Guillaume, want to give an update on Instant Finality and IBC? You can kind of run them together. Yep. So um, for IBC, the uh, MSIGs are up for uh, Yes and uh, Yes and uh, Telos to complete the integration with Wax. I believe uh, we have. I, I don't know, Jesse, if you know. Like I haven't checked the MSIG for uh, Telos, but it was pretty close. I think we had twelve out of fifteen last time I checked. And uh, on EOS, I think we had eight out of 15. That might have changed in the last day or two, but that's about where it was. Um, so, um, so, so yeah, um, it's basically at this point, it's just uh, giving the BPs a nudge to make sure they uh, they complete that. And then once the MSIG uh, go through, then um, the last step is basically to turn over control of the contracts to 
uh, essentially the governance of the chain. So like we've done for the other chains, we'll uh, basically do the same for Wex. And at that point, you're good to go. So um, uh, happy to keep you in the loop, Lucas. Like uh, just uh, I'll keep an eye on this and whenever it's complete, uh, I'll, I'll ping you. And then uh, if, it, if you need anything like uh, transaction uh, tests or uh, uh, any yeah, yeah, links to the GitHub repos and things like that, you just let me know what. I've got all of this for you. So cool. Awesome. Play it the way you see fit and uh, happy to also uh, help you craft any uh, press release any messaging that you'd like. Very exciting. Indeed. Indeed. There's a lot of people that are, that have been waiting for the, the, the wax IBC for a long time. So, <laughs> um, so on that front, uh, that, that basically takes care of, uh, the IBC side. Instant finality is still on a hold, um, like somewhat on hold until uh, tomorrow because uh, of uh, prior work commitments from the same uh, same team that is reviewing it. But I got assurances from <laughs> from the uh, uh, various people at the ENF that uh, starting next week things will uh, basically accelerate a lot for when it comes to reviews and the discussions of the last few items. To complete the core uh, functionality, we're we're pretty much there. Like there's just just like I said, like a few a um, few discussion items uh, to finalize, and then uh, then there's more work to be done in terms of integration and in terms of uh, uh, essentially like uh, connecting all of the plumbing so that it works uh, across the board. So there's a number of things like the smart contracts to be uh, edited and to be kind of change a little bit, like the feature activation mechanism has to be implemented and uh, additional stuff like the utilities to deal with uh, these new type of private public keys that we're dealing with. But this is all kind of, you know, relatively uh, straightforward stuff. Uh, the core has been uh, pretty much built and uh, it's looking pretty good. There's going to be probably some optimization as well, but that's 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 part of it. So um, so we're quite, quite excited about that. And uh, we've also got some uh, very interesting benchmarks when it comes to uh, the aggregate signatures, uh, the new intrinsics that we're adding to uh, to uh, the Antelope code base, uh, so that's uh, that's also very exciting. I think I think uh, it will open the door to a lot of new uh, possibilities that <laughs> we uh, didn't really think were even possible uh, if you uh, let's say that last year. So that's uh, that's quite exciting stuff. There's going to be a lot to unpack and a lot to discuss discussion material for quite a few uh, a few podcasts in my opinion so uh we can we can talk about that at a little point otherwise uh i think that's pretty much it um we're looking to uh get back full steam ahead in that direction um uh, after the launch of vm looking forward to that last sprint awesome any questions all right aaron you want Take it away on SDG. Yeah, sure. Um, kind of a repeat of last week, but we are engaging with a lot of developers right now, and we're getting some great feedback um, on how the session kit works. Um, we have a number of apps at this point that are integrating this early access version, and the, the overall, it's just been a really positive feedback. Um, with it allowing them to do things that they haven't been able to do before in apps without building themselves and really just helping them build their applications better. And the feedback, like, I think I started with this, but it, they're coming up with situations that we hadn't anticipated that we're able to make tweaks for and accommodate for. And so far, uh, just positive, I think is the best word to describe it. So um, in that vein, we're kind of, uh, like I said, we're making adjustments based on the feedback coming in from the developers who are deeply engaging in the session kit. And we're compiling that into the documentation that we're all working on right now. Um, the developers we have right now are the ones who, you know, they've built these apps before. They know what they're doing, whether it's directly with wallet SDKs or if they're using UAL or whatever they may be using these days. Um, so they're giving this, this great perspective that then we're able to weave into the documentation, into the website, into the guides that are going to help the developers that don't have that past experience. So when all is said and done with the educational materials and stuff like that, we should be able to craft a really great um, onboarding experience for new developers that are looking to build web applications in this space. Um, from a development perspective, uh, like we're doing those sorts of bug fixes and adjustments on the session kit. 
the UI is really starting to come together at this point. Um, we have some of the UI stuff merged up into our master branch, but we haven't done a release of it yet. Uh, we're still doing some bug fixes. There are some kind of uh, <laughs> really annoying bugs that we wouldn't want to release, uh, like the close button being triggered inadvertently and just closing out the processes. Um, but in the near future, we should have a polished UI release, which will then complete uh, the next milestone that is on the chopping block. It's a little bit uh, behind schedule right now because of the UI and just because of the way that we didn't anticipate this individual milestone needing to be done sequentially rather than in parallel. Um, and the milestone after that, like I mentioned last week, is just kind of waiting on a technical document based on that user interface. So the Gantt or like the waterfall looking Gantt chart, whatever it is, doesn't like it shows us behind a little bit, but we feel pretty confident in where we're at. And we have now started diverting some of our resources back onto the contract and account kits, which we haven't talked about a whole lot. Back in February, we decided to deprioritize those to focus in on the session kit since that is what effectively replaced UAL and transit and the other libraries people use today. And these new kits, the contract kit, and then also the account kit, um, they're going to provide functionality that we've never had that just adds an additional layer of ease for the developers. Um, not everybody will be super familiar with this, but just to kind of give a sense of what I mean, um, right now when you're working with anything Antelope related and you're interacting with a table or a smart contract, you need to go out and you need to find how to interact with that table or that smart contract, like by exploring the blockchain and finding that data. The contract kit is kind of an evolution of that. It's going to be discover. It does the discovery for you while you're writing your code. So that way it makes it easier to interact with contracts, whether you're reading or writing. Um, so I'm excited to see people get their hands on that. It should lower the barrier a lot for development purposes. Um, and hopefully, I think the milestone for that is mid to late June. So before then, we should have some kind of preview, technical preview of that, and be able to show that off a little bit. Um, but yeah, that's where the team's at. The website's coming along nicely and uh, really excited to be engaging with the developers in this community to push this forward and get those reactions and help them build these apps better. I'd like to add just uh, to that, like uh, Shaq from our team has been being a close eye on what you guys are doing and it's quite excited. Like he's uh, <laughs> he's been working with UAL and uh, Yes Transit for a long time. He's been a core contributor to these uh, protocols as well. And uh, you qualified your stuff as a definite game changer. So <laughs> really excited to see, uh, to see it come to life. That's awesome. He's been one of the developers we've been working with and talking with regularly. Um, and his feedback has also just been invaluable in this process. You know, when you're working on something so hard, you kind of end up in your own bubble and you might not see all of the possible uses of the thing. And having people like Shaq coming and dropping this kind of feedback with that outside perspective is so, so valuable. Do you need more? Uh, do you need more um, testing? I, I, I think back to when um, you were releasing the, the uh, Android wallet and um, we had the chance to work really closely with you on on um, the side voter and and it, it it occurred to me that like the the better the the better the the sort of in depth use use case testing you know like real development that's going on around something the the better you can find uh, uh, problems and I I'm just I myself have like I've kind of avoided jumping in because I didn't know exactly where. We, we were there, but I, I actually think we have some projects that could be closed. Are you looking for that or or is or do you have what you need there? Yeah, I mean, we're actively seeking that and we also are open to that kind of collaboration. Uh, there's a pull request on the Open Block Explorer right now that I started maybe a month ago or whatever that integrates what we have today to kind of kickstart that process. Uh, we're going to probably do that with things like Haifa and a couple other projects as well just to kickstart that and start that engagement, like us proactively kickstarting that. But if you guys have projects that you want us to be involved in the integration of, like migrating away from UAL or direct SDK integration, uh, yeah, reach out. We're happy to do that kind of stuff. 
Uh, that's great. Thank you. Um, uh, we will. And actually, uh, Gil, same question. Is that, is that a place where you're at with the, uh, with the, uh, um, IBC, uh, pieces? Are you looking for, for, um, real case studies to come in and sort of, you know, get ahead of the development or, or, oh, yeah. <laughs> your partner, yeah. I think at this point, at this point, this is, uh, this is, uh, for IBC, like we've got, we've got like all the tooling in place. Uh, now it's about, uh, you know, like the ideas and the use cases where we can basically like make it try to, I, I got a lot of people, uh, asking me, you know, like, uh, how to go about certain things, but not many developers that are able to, uh, implement such things. So I'd like to also, uh, uh, explore that transfer of knowledge, verify how we can, uh, share that information with more developers on board, more developers, like, uh, basically like show them how the protocol works. And all of that, we have a uh, uh, Phil Bestier, who's a current OCI, that is currently writing a, an article, a game article about uh, the IBC protocol. That's also an internal uh, memo that they get to be uh, distributing at OCI. Um, so it's very, very uh, interesting. Uh, I've used collaboration that we'd like to uh, also uh, uh, explore further with anyone else in the ecosystem. Anyone that has something in mind that uh could leverage ibc uh hit me up happy to uh to discuss with you and i mean anyone who wants to build something on top of ibc they might not necessarily know what just yet uh i'm happy to also like uh introduce them kind of match developers and uh i guess like uh, idea generators and i'll see what comes out of that so so my so thank you i appreciate that i'm actually really glad to hear that um uh I think we have a small audience of people who actually reach, who actually watch this whole thing and would, and would, to whom this would be surfaced just by watching. Um, I'd like to, I think this is an, a specific area where, where we should um, look at how to, how to uh, surface a, uh, this, these types of things for people. This is a very important area and the, probably the fastest we could accelerate the growth would be by making it clear to people. So, if anyone wants to get you know talk with me offline about ways we could do it, obviously we have the the show is one way, but there's some other ways we could we could try to do that as well. I think it'd be really valuable. So, and I'm open to spending time on on figuring out how to do that because that's this is the kind of thing where the difference between people a large number of people seeing it and interacting with it early on or not um, has a you know is something looking back you will see um, you know a large, a large, um, difference in how quickly these new technologies are being taken up. Agreed. Totally. All right. Any more comments, questions on SDK? All right. Next one, Antler CDT. Uh, this is Quick summary, it's in the release uh, that is coming out, so nothing new to add there. Uh, final one on the Ledger app. Uh, there are a There is going to be another meeting with uh, the Ledger uh, rep, Thomas. Uh, while we have logos and some content from each of the chains, there are actual web pages on the site that currently you know, are all about EOS and, you know, lists our price and a little history and their support. Um, so there's at least three pages that we've identified so far. So we're going to meet with Thomas to get an explicit finite list to make sure we don't miss anything. And then once we have that, uh, each of the chains can expect Adam to reach back out, um, possibly for more content. The one thing we're not sure yet is whether Ledger is essentially going to take the same page, because some of it looks a little canned in the structure, and if they're going to create a page for each chain, or if they expect um, you know, each chain to do that work. So I'll, we'll get those answers. Um, again, we're just talking about web content at this point, so it's critical, it's important, but it shouldn't be a big lift once we know the exact pieces of information we need to get and things we need to accomplish. Uh, any last comments on that? All right. Uh, we are through the status today. Anything else people would like to add in the last 13 minutes?
All right. Everybody have a great Thursday. Thanks, everyone. Thanks. Thanks, everybody. Great to you know, you know, Reach out if anyone wants to talk to me offline about any, any of those topics. Topics. I will. <laughs> uh, I'll see you, Douglas. All right. Cheers.